Welcome to this live all about creating or utilizing our clients' metaphors creatively so that they can have fast, lasting, and extremely profound breakthroughs. So raise your hand if you want to make it easier for yourself to help your clients. And raise your hand if metaphors are something that has come up within your sessions and you want to be able to utilize it more. Raise your hands if you want epic client breakthroughs. If so, you are in the right place because we're going to talk about metaphors and it's going to be very simple, very quick, straight to the point today because I know you have a lot of impact to make, right? And so what we're going to cover today is all about what to do. I'll we'll cover three things specifically, what to do when a client gives us metaphors and then what to avoid when clients give us metaphors. And number three, finding our client's root cause, the root of their problem using metaphors. <laughs> And so, you know, metaphors are one of my most favorite things to use only when they come up. And so what we first really want to think about, and this is a conversational hypnosis principle, is to meet a client where they're at and utilize whatever they give us. Some clients are not going to use metaphors. Some clients are full of metaphors. And so what I would encourage you to do is, you know, if you found that one of your sessions had, you know, really good, amazing metaphors, stop expecting but it's going to be the same thing for every client because it's not. Even the same client will respond in a different way from a different session. Why? Because we are humans and we are dynamic. And so by creatively using metaphors, so for example, it is a session uh, that we're sitting, sitting in and a client um, starts to use their own metaphors. Now, note that I'm not telling you or giving you a list of metaphors to use. No, 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 no. What we're doing in conversational hypnosis, the biggest principle we have is utilizing what our clients tell us. So for example, you're in a session and you are with a client and the client says that they want to overcome procrastination in their business and they want to take more action in their business and as you are going through the interview with them as you're going through the hypnotic interview they start speaking in metaphors you're asking them questions they think about the answer they respond to you and then eventually a client goes you know yes well, like whenever I feel like taking action in my business it feels like I'm climbing up a tree I'm just climbing the tree. And I can't seem to climb the tree. And every time I climb, I just slip down uh, and I go all the way down. I fall back down, something like that, right? That is an amazing, amazing metaphor to use. That is an amazing um, thing to utilize right then and there. Because what are metaphors? They are the expression of the unconscious mind, right? So when we receive that, definitely jump on that right away. I'm looking around because my mouse is doing weird things. Okay, so a client gives us that. So what do we do with that? We place our client's attention on it. That is it. Super simple. I like to think of it kind of like when you talk to kids, right? They Kids have this huge imagination. And what we want to do is just ask them and and go into their world, really. That's, that's the biggest part of it. So the client says that they're climbing up the tree and they can't seem to climb. You are really just going to have a conversation about that experience, about that metaphor, about that internal expression that they are giving us right then and there. So ask them questions about the tree. What kind of tree is it, right? How how long have you been climbing this tree? What happens if you climb? Like things like that. That is how you place your attention on that metaphor. And this is what to avoid. This is what not to do. When you hear it and you say, okay, keep climbing that tree. Pretend that you are being that you are floating and you're no longer climbing up the tree, that you are floating up the tree and somehow a, these invisible hands are guiding you up to all the way up so you can see the view and you can see this beautiful view of the pastures and cows and sheep and, and all of these things. Do not do that. <laughs> do not do that. Why? Because who are we to know that that is the vision that our client needs to see? to help them solve the problem. We cannot know 100% for certain what the client needs to do in their own mind 
with that metaphor. We cannot simply predict that. So do not ever, ever make shit up and tell a client what to do with their metaphor. You can try it. Let me know how that goes. And let me know the results that you'll get with that. But based on experience, it usually doesn't end up well. Maybe the client will want to do that. But the what we want to really realize and remember is that the unconscious mind is very deliberate. So it has given that client that metaphor of climbing the tree for a reason. They need to experience something and see something within that metaphor in order for them to solve the problem. So to answer the question of how do we use or how do we find the root cause using metaphors, you literally just wait. You wait for the mind to do whatever it needs to do and to express whatever it needs to express in order for the client to solve their problem. I know it sounds kind of too easy, right? But it is this simplicity that actually creates client results. It is not through making shit up ourselves, telling them that they need to to rise up and the invisible hands are going up and putting them at the top of the tree so they can see the thing. What if that's not what they need to see? What if they need to actually feel themselves climbing that tree? They need to be able to climb that tree themselves and get there on their own by themselves, by climbing the tree in order to find this so-called root cause in order for them to solve their problem. We can't know that for sure until we place more attention on it or our client pays attention to it because it's our client's mind, right? So really that is how we use the metaphors and how you can get creative with this is really through experience is through putting this principle in action it is through working with clients and applying this principle of not telling our clients what to do and instead just placing their attention on it having their creative unconscious mind to do the work and place the little puzzle pieces for them that is how we become creative because then for our next client that's how we'll know like we'll have that reference point to know that that this worked because I just allowed my client to really formulate and liven up this metaphor on their own. And really, it's super duper fun. When metaphors come up and and, and, and they grow, it's really one of the most um, fascinating and fun sessions. I remember having a session with a client um, and she was all metaphors. It was, it was truly fun. And we were talking about something really, um, really intense, actually. Like she was feeling a lot of resentment, feeling a lot of resentment um, in her business and in the community that she, that she had within her business. And, you know, that feels very intense, feeling resentful. But what we actually had talked about was metaphors of, of the, the metaphor of basketball and her needing to shoot hoops um, in order for her to resolve this decades worth of resentment. And just by talking about basketballs and what she needed to do, I don't fully remember the conversation <laughs> because it was unconscious by just placing her attention on it by her knowing what to do with the basketballs but what that had to do with resentment god knows who, what it is her mind does though so so by just focusing her attention on it she was able to release decades of resentment she was able to get more clients after that because she re re released the resentment that she was feeling just by her mind expressing this metaphor and being able to put it together inside her mind without me needing to tell her exactly uh, what needs to to happen. It's just allowing her to do it. So really, um, the next time you come into your client session, don't be like, I have a session this afternoon. Therefore, I'm going to make up this metaphor of the trees because Fritz told me to. No, 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 do not do that shit. Wait for the metaphor to organically come up in the session. And once it does, once an organic metaphor comes up, just place your client's attention on it by having a conversation with them, by being invested in their experience of experiencing this metaphor. Like, be interested. Be interested in the met metaphor. Ask them about the tree. Like, how are you climbing right now? Are you, are you using your legs to climb up this tree? It becomes a very, very unusual conversation, but that's what conversational hypnosis is about, right? It's about that 
that conversation with the unconscious and how we converse with the unconscious is to use its own metaphors and place their attention on it and avoid avoid making your own metaphors because maybe you have been taught that whenever clients climb up trees you have to help them climb up but if they don't want help to climb up and maybe if they do what if what if they don't want a hand to 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 help them climb maybe they just want to be like Shh. you just go like that right we don't really know for sure and it is really not up to us to tell our clients how to solve their problem right and this is like really high level meta level advanced stuff that we teach inside conversational hypnosis but you can straight away um, use and apply this on your next session and just see how it goes. Just have fun with it, right? Be open to it. Be open to learning. When you are invested in in your clients, they will be in more invested in their changes while you'll just get better results for them. And really that is how you get to the root cause because by placing your client's attention on the metaphor, things will come up, right? That will expand. And that metaphor of climbing the tree and procrastination, that might be linked. And eventually, as soon as our clients unconsciously process, the actual problem will come up and the actual solution will also come up, which is a very fun, indirect, uh, but more powerful way to help our clients solve their problem. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions at all with regards to breakthroughs, uh, metaphors, the unconscious mind, learning more about it to help your clients have deeper and more profound results because you love seeing the wins you love seeing the aha moments and metaphors are just one tiny tiny piece of the puzzle to help our clients is a very cool one but definitely uh, a big one and if you truly want a live demo of metaphors being used in place I will drop a link down the comments for you to actually watch it because we can talk about this shit all day. It's not as powerful as actually seeing it in action because it is through seeing it in action that you will form that that's more uh, deeper learning because you can see it in action. So I'll, I'll drop that link below to further enhance your learning. Otherwise, I will see you on the next live.